Wisdom. It's an incredibly valuable asset. Some would say more precious than gold. It's attractive, appealing, admirable. Conversely, a lack of wisdom is the basis of immaturity, blind spots, and bad decisions. Wisdom. It can be gained over time, but it can't be rushed. But wisdom can be shared. That's precisely what we are here to do right now. Today, we are here to hack wisdom, to distill it, to understand it, and to process it. Why? To get better at life. Welcome to The Main Thing. This is your new nine-minute podcast. I'm your host, Skip Lineberg, and I've set out to interview the wisest people I know. We'll see what we can learn from each one when they're faced with an incredibly difficult, soul-piercing question. Welcome to the Main Thing Podcast. I'm your host, Skip Lineberg, coming to you today from Parkwood Studios with another special delivery of wisdom and a warm welcome to our first-time listeners. So glad you're here. So glad you've joined us today. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss a single new episode. Connie Cruthers is a storyteller, photojournalist, and a weaver of words. She writes in the style of Mary Oliver and David White to discover the intriguing life within us all. Much like her supposed cousin, Mark Twain, Connie lives on a bluff overlooking the Mississippi River, where the currents of life lap right past her door. Her work has been featured in publications like Beyond Knowing, Huffington Post, A Sacred Presence, and Lifeline. Now, when she's not writing prose poetry, Connie is a certified creative coach whose mission is to help people find their way through life. She's married with two adult children, and Connie comes to us today from her home in Memphis, Tennessee. Settle in, sit back. Over the next nine minutes, you'll discover why Connie Cruthards is one of the wisest people I know. Connie Cruthards, good morning and welcome to the Main Thing Podcast. Thank you so much for making time for us. So glad to be with you today, Skip. I've really been looking forward to this. Oh, so have I, so have I. We are on an ongoing study and quest for wisdom, and I can't wait for you to add yours to that ongoing conversation this morning. If I were to describe you as a poet, would you accept that moniker? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because I resisted it because I wanted to be a novelist or a okay. something else. Um, whereas my lifelong job, like dream job, had been to become a psalmist. Oh, wow. And then finally I realized that um, a psalmist, and the reason was because I like how a psalmist pounds out life. Like it starts with, oh my gosh, I love you. You're so present for me that you're the most incredible thing in the world, God or life. And then it's yelling at him. Like, where right. are you? Why aren't you here? All in yeah. the same, same I'm in collection the of verses. Down in yes, the depths I'm in of the, the depths, miry clay and, I love and I'm you. struggling. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And you're not here and I can't right. stand you now. Right. And and then I looked up poetry, capital P, uh, I mean, Psalms. I looked it up and it said capital P as a psalm, uh, you know, in a book. Okay. But the lowercase is just a sacred poem. Ah. And that to me, you know, is being a poet. I love it. So. I love it. I also love in your, your bio uh, that folks have just heard that, you are presented also as a photo journeyist, not a photo journalist, but a photo mm -hmm. journeyist. Tell us a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. I just had five days in Santa Fe to let that come to life. Um, I take pictures of the journey as if the journey's talking to me. Mm, so I'll feel yes. called to a window and then let the window say what it has to say in some odd way and capture things that sometimes I just don't even realize it. So I just capture photos along the way of, of the journey. And so I have like 40,000 photos in my phone. No kidding. Big fat <laughs> cloud that they're stored in. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing a bit about that. Beautiful words written by an observer of life uh, that will take you places as you read it. And also beautiful illustration by uh, your illustrator, Hannah Kate Llewellyn. So Connie, tell us about your book, The Current. Yeah, it was a, a real, <clears throat> excuse me, surprise that happened, you know, in the last 18 months or so. And I'm um, inspired by a friend just because I kept writing poetry. 
And I looked and then suddenly I had 150 poems and 83 of them are in there. The book kind of arranged itself. My writing mm. coach helped me just step back and watch what happened and let my intuition took over. Next thing I knew, there were three stacks of poems. One of them is I just absolutely love nature, um, the planet, what's happening on the planet, the people on the planet. I have so much compassion. And that first part of the book, the largest part, is about um, the earth and her moons and the inhabitants and everything that's going on by chapter. The yeah. second part is um, a bit of learning from life and um, so much that I've been through now. You know, it's 60 years old. And um, and it is sort of a guide. There's yeah. uh, chapters on emotions. There's chapters mm-hmm. on, you know, I, I have a great yearning to become listless. And mm. no one was listening to why I wanted to be listless. It's not that I want to lay on a couch all day. I don't want to have any lists. I don't yeah. love to do lists. I want to be <laughs> free. So there's, you know, talk about being listless. Talk about running away. Some of those fantasies. And uh, the very last chapter of the book is um, a self-portrait. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are 12 poems in that. It's a very intimate look at um, a journey, you know, that that goes through recovery that has poems written about things I needed to write about. Uh, I mean, that I needed to have read about, really, and I wasn't finding that. And by the end of that, the last poem, um, there's one about an invitation to join the freedom of the flow and Mm. the current. But then the last poem only has one word. It was added at the end through a meditation where there was this bird being set free from this darkness in this little box. And that's where I'd kept myself most of my life, oh, very wow. much in a box uh, for a lot of reasons. And so the whole the whole title and the words of the entire poem, all it says is release. Yeah. And this bird is being set free and taking a ray of light out into the world. Mm, I love it. I love it. That word is so special to me. We were connected thanks to the generosity and the idea of Trish Ring. Uh, Folks, if that name sounds familiar, Trish was our guest on episode 65 of the Main Thing podcast. And so we had the horse whisperer introduce us to the poet and photojournalist. Connie, uh, tell us a little bit about your relationship with Trish. Um, Trish has been one of my very best friends for almost 10 years now. She she found me. Um, Uh She's also a coach. And... Um, somebody from our coaching school had said, have you met, have y'all met each other? And uh, she had me for tea, which is one of my very favorite things to do. Oh, wow. Very cool. And yeah, and it wasn't very long after that our life turned upside down. And Trish was literally the first person that just like, just showed up, like just showed Uh. up at this hospital and said, I need to see my friend Mm. and came in and said, I can't believe this because two weeks ago, you know, your son was hiking mountains out by my house. So yeah, Trish, yeah. Trish is both my friend, but she's also a mentor in my life too. And um, my husband and I have done like marriage counseling with her and the horse whispering. And there's no sitting down and talking that could have done what her horses did for uh, our marriage. It was just because my husband doesn't like that. He don't want to sit anywhere. He don't want to talk. Yeah, yeah. But that horse taught him things. So, yeah, she's um, she is a precious soul in my life. Is mm-hmm. that what I would say about her? Oh, thank yeah. you for giving us a glimpse into your relationship. It all started with tea with Trish. Thank you, Trish. Yeah, thank you. Mm. Thanks to both of you. Connie Cruthers, what's the main thing you've learned in your lifetime so far? Um, Skip, the main thing I've learned in my lifetime so far is that whatever is in the way of my voice is in the way of my life. Oh, wow. Whatever's in the way of your voice is in the way of your life. How did you discover that? Unpack that for us, if you would, Connie, and just take us through all the rich meaning that's imbued in that beautiful sentence. Well, I I mean, the briefest path to it would be to get to 2018, so much work I've done in my life, 
except this one place where I just couldn't get past it. And people kept saying, you know, you need to get healthy for your kids. I mean, I weighed almost 100 pounds more than I do right now. Mm. And I, um, my eating disorder was taking me, I mean, you know, for years I was, I, you know, celebrated that at least I was an exercise bulimic. So whatever I did, I got rid of, right? Right. But right. then the truth started coming that there had been so much pain and so much hurt and so much sorrow and so much fear that the only thing I could do was let my fear lead me everywhere I went. And things got so bad. I couldn't do it for the kids. I couldn't do it to live. I couldn't do it until I had no access to my creativity. And creativity is also defined as spirit, as breath. Mm. And I asked for help. I landed in your town at the West Virginia Institute for Spirituality, attended Mm -hmm. a week-long silent retreat. And it was through that that I went for trauma treatment. And instead, um, my beloved person there that was helping, her name happens to be Sister Carol, a PhD in spirituality, right? Mm. She said, it's addiction, honey. And you're exhausted. Uh, Just go to bed. And I slept the whole first day. And um, anyway, um, eventually I started putting down the things that I was putting all of my trust in, like Mm -hmm. that my fear was protecting me, that this eating disorder I'd had since I was four and hiding food in a house that wasn't safe um, was protecting me and surrendered. You say in your podcast every time a lack of wisdom and to quote you immaturity blind spots and bad decisions yeah, yeah. i was like check 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 oh gosh they were in the they were in the way mm. but i wanted to make them wrong yeah they're not wrong they were trying to save me mm-hmm. and i didn't need that anymore yeah and so now i spend my time um helping you know like like helping others, serving others in so many ways, and also just staying as honest as I can, and then having yeah. so much compassion for that part of myself. Yeah. What a fabulous story. Wow. That's very powerful and transformative, Connie. Let's be honest. It's not easy to ask for help or talk about money. Hey, it's Skip here, and many listeners like you continue to ask me, What do you need to continue to develop and build this show? Well, for context, it takes our team about 15 hours of work to produce each one of these packages of wisdom that we deliver to you in podcast form. Really, what we need is funding. Funding to cover our costs. So, in response, I formed a site on the Patreon platform where you can elect to become a supporting patron of the Main Thing Podcast. Now, there are three levels you might consider, ranging from $6 to $27 per month. It's all safe and secure, and you can explore the options at patreon.com slash themainthingpodcast. Now, how will we use the funding? Funds provided by you and other patrons will be used to defray the costs of production, promotion, and our recurring technology expenses each month. In short, you will be helping to keep this pipeline of wisdom flowing. Thanks. As we kind of wrap up and, and look uh, at your your wisdom from another angle, you said if something is in the way of my voice, it's also in the way of my life. What would life be like for someone who has not yet discovered that wisdom that you shared with us? What, what might they be feeling or Uh, struggling with, or what might, I'm going to use the word symptoms in air quotes here, what might some of those symptoms be for someone who has not yet come to that wisdom? Mm, Feeling um, trapped Mm -hmm. in some way, Mm -hmm. Um, definitely stuck, Um, Mm. just a series of of starts with many more stops than, than, than what happens in between, but it's just an unsettled and unanchored Um, place and it doesn't take much to sh- you don't have to get it all twist you know like all back just one shift you know they say you know you take a rudder and yeah. you make the tiniest shift yeah and you're gonna land somewhere else and for those people to find a lighthouse of mm. some sort to just see like you were talking about you know with release and to see the a light Mm-hmm. You don't have to throw the door open to get into darkness. You just crack it the slightest bit and nothing looks the same. Yeah, yeah. 
Beautiful. That's a great advice for anyone listening, and it's great validation for me to hear, too. Connie, I can't thank you enough for coming on to the Main Thing Podcast to not only share your wisdom, which was amazing, uh, but also to share your heart, your creativity, um, the beauty that you observe and translate back into um, words and poems. Just thank you. Thank you for all of that. I uh, thank you. And um, an opportunity to talk about what is the main thing, even though it could change tomorrow, sure. um, is a gift. And it's a gift to hear and to, to these little little pieces of wisdom from each other. You know, we're made to be storytellers and somewhere along the way we've lost our way with mm-hmm. storytelling. And um, and that is what this is giving voice to, these little short stories to change the world. Oh, I humbly accept that and I'm going to keep going. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Connie, so long for now. And to you. Wow, that goes by incredibly fast, doesn't it? Time flies when you're hacking wisdom. I hope you're left wanting more. Sync up with us again next time on The Main Thing for nine more minutes of wisdom.